Why, hello there. Looking for British infantry for the AWI, um, introduced by Warlord Games. I guess you may have come to the right place. So um, this is a chap who's already been assembled. And we will be discussing the difference between these guys and these guys who are the Perry version. Um, but that is for a short while. So this is the box. These are all the figures you get in the box. It's quite good. Uh, you get yourself a huge amount of information on this nice little booklet. Um, you don't want to see the um, um, Continental book. This, this is this is the easy version. This is the American book. Uh, sorry, the British um, uniform guide. Um, later on, you will get to the, we'll, we'll get to the uh, Continental Infantry, which has six pages. Um, it's a booklet. It's an actual booklet. You can sit in the car and read it while your wife's having a checkup for being pregnant. Sorry, that's, that's very, what. Very specific. It is because uh, I, I get really bored sat outside the hospital. You know, during the plague, we weren't allowed to. Uh, daddies weren't allowed to be there, so daddies had to sit in the car park while wife was inside having checkups done. And um, Warlord and Perry give these great little booklets to read and. God, I have a boring life. Right, so we will do the command first. This is the command. It has bases attached, which is odd, because none of the figures are actually based. They're all walking with bare feet. Oh, sorry, the feet aren't attached to a base. And we have quite a collection of weaponry to carry, muskets, some awesome pistol action going on, and um, various arms doing different things. Uh, this is just the command sprue. You don't get any of this fun stuff on the line sprue. The line infantry sprue has nothing interesting going on. All the interesting arms are on the command sprue, which, which is it should be. <laughs> so we have a large collection of heads, so you can equip these guys with any type of head you want. You have more than enough heads to have them as light infantry, or as shock troops, or as grenadiers, or as line infantry. So you have all the heads you will ever need. That it? Yeah. Can't think of anything else to say. Um, so that's it. Uh, d downside is the actual figures don't have a huge amount of articulation. They look like they're in a picture from the period. You know when you see pictures of British soldiers doing yeah. stuff? And they're stood in that weird way with the feet together and stuff. That's kind of what you get in this. Um, this is the infantry sprue, and here they are. The infantry are interesting. The way the arms are shaped makes it... So you can't really do much in the way of conversions. You're kind of stuck with what you've got. You see how the arm is comes at a certain angle, which means you can only use particular arms for particular figures, which, which is a bit annoying. Because I like to mix it up a bit. Um, British infantry often carried an axe. Um, so I'd like a couple of guys armed with axe, but <laughs> can't do that. And also, all the bodies are more or less stood in that weird pose. Yeah. That same pose. There's nothing else. There's a few figures that you can do something with, but everything else isn't. Everything else is a bit like that. So if you look on the back, you see all these guys sort of all stood in the same line firing. That's really what you're getting. It, it's just a firing line. It's not anything interesting. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So we also get two sets of arms because one set of arm has just um, the sackcloth type, type British coat and one set has these weird lapel things um, which is for the grenadiers and the light infantry. But not the light infantry with round hat the light infantry with um, the helmet. Why, why make it so confusing? Uh, because light infantry with helmet were shock troops, not light infantry. We call them light infantry, but it doesn't mean the same thing. Get it? Do, it. Do you know like grenadiers? Do you know what grenadiers' original job was? Uh, it's, grenades. It, yes. So grenades, that's what they were. They were men who threw grenades. They went forwards, threw grenades and hit people with large axes. That, that, that's actually what they did. 
And we don't call them grenad we stop calling them grenadiers because they stop throwing grenades. But the, it's still there. The name's still there. And there were lots of complicated things that went on with organising the British Army. And so during the War of Independence, we had to diversify the army a bit because we were fighting an army in non-linear warfare. I, the, the Americans would not always fight properly. <laughs> they would cheat and, and, and like do lots of skirmishing, which was very annoying to the British because the British weren't really trained to fight in woods, whereas the Americans were because they were born there. You were still winning every single battle. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, apart from the last one. So our downfall is exactly how the Romans lost their first legion in uh, Britain. Marking single file in the woods, and then get ambushed. Yes. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but the last battle, the big, 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 big battle that we lost was the last battle for New York. And that was lost because the British soldiers were so tired after killing so many Frenchmen that when the Americans turned up, they went, ah, oh, stuff it, we surrender. <laughs> um, that's actually what happened. Um, but anyway, that's besides the point. And you might want to read a history book because it would be interesting to find out what happened to the uh, um, the um, local people who were freed under British law. Right. Right? Uh-huh. People who weren't maybe yep. European. Mm -hmm. You may want to see what the American army did to those British soldiers who weren't Europeans. Um, because then again, though, the British soldiers are prisoners of war. You don't kill prisoners of war. I don't know. You do not, and what? you certainly do. don't. And you certainly no, you certainly <laughs> don't do it just because they happen to come from a different continent. Um, I'm sorry, I just got no sympathy for the Americans. I just like. You see all this stuff going on, you think, yeah, we'll probably have it coming. Say anything else, say anything else, I'll make you watch Patriot again. I don't despise that film. I despise Patriot. Um, anyway, uh, so... The, the, okay, I'm going to get into the actual figures. That, 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 you can see the figures. This is roughly how they assemble. They're, they're a firing line, which is great. It's fine if you want to do that with them. Um, Just like the uh, British line for the... Uh Zulu War. Very much like the British line, they're all yeah. firing, you get no chances to do anything different. And if that's the game you're doing, that's fine. Yeah. You still look cool. Yeah, but with the British infantry, you can convert them. Remember when we did Zulu War, we had yeah. guys with axes, guys carrying um, guys on stretchers and all that sort of stuff. You can convert, you can't convert these guys. And I think the reason why they didn't give them bases, I suppose, is so that people can do what they want. Like, have, they can put them on big base. They can do all different types of variations. Oh, I think these are great to be based to something like Impetus. Yeah, great, because you don't have to create the bases off. Yeah. They've already done for you. Yeah. Um, and, and I love it because, of course, I base on these, on these plastic bases. And so it, I don't have to do any work. Um, so I, I like them for that reason. And also, we're doing a skirmish game. And so we want this type of figure for the skirmish yeah. game the perry figures are great but they don't really suit what we want to use them for if you get what i mean um both but, sides have their pros and cons yes um and now i'm gonna have to have a look at both right so here we have a perry guy and here we have a British guy, and you can see the difference in size. I know it's not easy because that's blue tack top. You meant Perry and Warlord, by Perry the way. Perry and Warlord. What did I say? British. I, did I say Brit what? You said British? Sorry, Perry and you Warlord. Here you have a Perry guy, and then here's yeah. a British guy. <laughs> there is a difference in height, and there's a slight difference in bulk. The Perry is slightly shorter, slightly wider, which is actually what I usually expect from Warlord. Because usually Warlord are more like these Perry figures yeah. in, in scale and size, which is odd. Um, so these guys are a bit bigger, a bit taller. Um, and detail-wise, there's not much difference. What do you think? No, they look quite similar. Just yeah. just stances. They look quite similar. I mean, these are, these are just painted up so we could do this unboxing video. Um, but overall, I think they're, they're both good. And at a pinch, you could actually use both sets of figures if you really wanted to. Um, really, you're best getting a, a, one lot. And if you want, if you don't want to spend time, get Perry. Perry have two arms to stick on. Problem done. 
two arms, hat, hat. done. That these guys, well. yeah, yeah, these guys, a um, massive amount of work to put these things, these things together. Um, it, it, it takes ages to put these things together. They don't fit together easily and you, you don't get much options with them. That's just a thing I pointed out, I noticed. Mm. Then again, they are better than the Spanish Succession British. I've uh, seen them, so I can't. Yeah, the Spanish Succession British, you, you, um, there is no option whatsoever for them. They're just marching or firing, which is a downer. Really. That's quite a bit tricks. Uh, for the Romans, they have like three different types of the exact same Roman. Roman standing, Roman advancing, Roman fighting. Yes. So that way you can make a base up with different types of variations. Yeah. Uh, these guys are all firing, which is fair because the way we fought at the time, both sides, was we'd just get in a big line and fire. And, fire. <laughs> and then we'd charge and win, usually. Well, when, according to the films, uh, oh, God. We, uh, <laughs> oh, God. we fire, miss a lot. Oh, um, really? And then we keep firing, and then the Americans get scared and start running away, and then we charge. Yeah. But then the cavalry get in the way. Yeah. Which is a criticism of the cavalry. You get in the way, aren't you? They get in the way, yeah. <laughs> um, you, um, you see, during, during the AWI, the British did not actually fight like the British fought everywhere else. Because we were fighting people we knew. So they knew how we fought. So we had to change tactics. And often we wouldn't fire until we were at 50 yards. Like, you know, most, most of the generals used to fight those in guerrilla warfare. They used to do exactly what the Napoleonics did. In Spain? Yeah, everything. Everything yeah. was exactly the same. Yeah. And so then they just kept getting lost and lose and lose and lose until they changed tactics and they finally beat us in the end because we gave in. There's too many of them. Well, no, it wasn't, <laughs> no, I don't, it wasn't like Britain was outnumbered, particularly. No, it were because we're fighting like five fronts. Yes, all right, yeah. We, we, we found it very hard to supply the troops in, in the States because the French Navy was blockading the ports and the British Navy was too busy sinking the Spanish Navy <laughs> and freeing slaves just to annoy the Spanish because we were good at it. Um, so we were hunting down Spaniard galleons and, and, and see, actually we destroyed the Spanish fleet at one point. I think, did we set, it, set fire to it in port? Yes. Was that the same one? Was that yes. this? Spent, was that the end of the Seven Years' War? When we did that, or was that the War of Independence? We did that. No, probably the Seven Years' War, if I'm honest. Po po I don't think we did yeah, that. Yeah. In, uh, I know. I think we did it twice. <laughs> we did it in Spanish Armada, didn't we? Oh, that was years earlier, though. Yeah, we did also set fire to the Spanish Armada, but that because it was funny. <laughs> Our troops never got paid for that, you know. No, no, they didn't. They no. were starving. Yeah, uh, the, uh, uh, the troops that won the battle were starved to death by the British government because the British government didn't want to pay them. Yep. Yeah. I really dislike Britain as well. <laughs> <laughs> parliament, just get rid of Parliament. I think the world would be a better place, right? Just have the monarchy. <laughs> well, it's like the Americans wanted um, representation, right? They wanted to, to, to be present, rep represented in Parliament. And the British government said no because they didn't want the additional, was it seven members of Parliament? They didn't want seven new members of parliament, right? So they fought the war of independence because they didn't want seven more MPs. If you know how many MPs well, no, we've got the there? Main, the main reason they had the American War of Independence was because of taxes. It, it was representation that started the whole arguments off. The tax thing was a bit weird because they want... Yeah, we, but then they won and had even more tax. Yeah. Because the, then they had to start paying for everything. The tax thing, they want, uh, they, we, we wanted them to pay 10% tax. And after the independence war, they ended up paying 30% tax. I pay 20%, I don't know what you're <laughs> You pay 20%, yeah. So the colonies would be paying 10% now, so... Yeah. I mean, that fair. was it, wasn't it? Because like, they wanted us, Britons, to pay even more tax for them to live without paying tax. Well, But then we didn't want to pay more tax. So we ended up having a war because we didn't want to pay more tax. The problem was we had Spain to the south, France also to the south. I think there's sorts of French colonies north, were they? Have we taken them by then? I might have taken them by then. Um, so we had the French and Span Spanish knocking around. And also there were prob problems with various Indians who were backed by the French, by the way, financed by the French. 
Um, and so it took a lot of troops to garrison the states. I thought winning Agincourt was supposed to just have a long lasting truce with France. Uh, yeah, but we had the Mad King. Mm -hmm, mind. The Mad King came along and we lost France. Yeah. And I've been fighting them ever since. Because it's through marriage, wasn't it? Hmm? It was through marriage. Oh yeah, he married the Queen. Uh, yeah. Henry V married the Princess of France. Making him king, and his son was, or their son was pronounced the, was it their son or their, or their son, the next son on, I don't know, one of them, um, was pronounced king of both England and France. So the only time I've ever been friends with all sides at the same time was World War, right? Uh, even then we didn't get on with the French. We sank the French Navy when it was on our side. Yeah, but like American War of Independence, and then later on they ended up being the French. allies. Yeah, we fighting the French, yeah, well, no, not really. I mean, when did we ally with the French, other than World War Two and World War One? Am I missing anything? There's this sci-fi film I watched. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. We, sorry, France has never been Britain's ally, and they're only allies of expedience in both great wars. You haven't tired yet, you've been holding that there for ages. I forgot I was even holding it. <laughs> you know, this guy's bored, he's just going to wander off. Sorry, we're 16 minutes into the video. We haven't, right. No, well, we finished it, didn't we? Yeah, we finished it. Right. So. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Sorry, we just had a delivery. Um, so that's the figures. I like the figures. I think they paint up great. They look great. But for big battles, we're going to be going Perry, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. That's the only way we can do it. We're going to, we've got a skirmish game idea for these guys. And so we're going to be doing these as skirmishes, which is why we bought two boxes. One box from Perry, one box from Warlord, uh, to decide which one we'd use. Yeah. And so we ended up, we're going to use this as the skirmish game. Right. But I have got some interesting ideas with it, which I'll show you later. So if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and comment down below what you think of the British Line Regiment by Warlord Games. And if you're interested in seeing any of this stuff, go to our new website, which is in the description below. So it's... Hey Oliver, it's goodbye from me, and, and it's goodbye, goodbye from him, and it's goodbye from little Squishy Face, who is the newest addition to the family, and is <laughs> just woken up. <laughs> yeah. Hello Squishy Face. <laughs> right, and it's goodbye from him. Goodbye. <laughs>